little bleary eyed this morning after a little bit too much um, Xbox last night with Terry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Grown man, eh? It's a sad state of affairs. But anyway, let's not dwell on my life. Um, yes, so a few things came to light after I stopped working. Um, big thanks to Steve at uh, RC Crawlers Mid Wales. That's his official title. I've checked it out. Um, I was talking to him about this as well as Terry updating them both and um, he reminded me that uh, RC Sparks had the same issue with finding the right driver for these tiny little scale bolts with his CA10 build a few years ago and he discovered afterwards I believe that they had supplied the appropriate drivers so Steve let me know and sure enough in the little bag here were two little drivers. Now I'd seen these and I'd just written them off as um, spacers because you know I mean there you go that's it you get two little brown pellets in the back um, but that's what that's indeed what they are so first job of the day is to so they just slot on you know uh, once two once two and a half mil and uh, there you go hey -ho, right okay more and on I'll catch up with you guys um, in real time when I've got the other chassis reel done and obviously uh, you'll be able to see it going on at uh, I'm going to call this Terry speed on the video overhead as I uh, as I carry on <laughs> all right I call it Terry speed incidentally because he works about 12 times as fast as I do anyway so this little clip here you're watching me just replacing all the bolts I put in yesterday uh, with the uh, proper small headed bolts no great dramas, no problems to report, drivers worked fine. So, yeah, well worth the result, uh, well worth the effort, as you'll see. Right, so just to show you what uh, which, which bolts I'm talking about and what difference it makes, there you go. They look really cool, man, they're just, it's well worth the effort. I'm glad I found the, found the, um, the thing. Yeah, very nice. Right, so this is the second half of the chassis. Uh, very much a piece of cake, just replaced the round headed uh, bolts with the button cap bolts as I did on the on the first half. Otherwise no dramas, no problems. Nice and easy. Okay, so I'm at the point now where I'm going to put the two chassis rails together. Uh, obviously this one went together much quicker because there's only the uh, outside detail to be added on, uh, not all of the inside stuff because that's on the other one. So, um, this is step 24. Um, I just I've, I've test fitted this, but uh, it it impressed me enough to want to give you guys a little look um, at what it's um, how it goes together, because it's it's you know one of the things with this kit was how how it was going to be built. It's, it was a good price, even even I think at a more usual retail of about three fifty pounds, four hundred pounds. You know I got it for as I said before about two hundred and sixty off Banggood delivered. Was it going to fit together as good as it looked? Um, or was it going to be just a collection of beautiful bits that didn't really work? Um, so here's the two chassis rails. Let's put them together. Um, this is friction fit only. So you're going to start down at this end. Match these two diagonal holes up. And it just... All the bits just kind of... Kind of... It worked better last time I did it. Right, so they just fit together. You know, the chassis rails just, that's it. So there's no kind of, there's no slop in anything. Um, oh, that's the two, that's the two rattly bits at the front. But there's, there's nothing, I haven't bolted it on yet, you know. Okay, now, putting the second half of the chassis uh, onto the first half is just a really, just an exercise in lining all the holes up, starting at one end and working across, bolting the various uh, brackets and uh, chassis braces into the uh, into the, the second half. No, no real dramas, no problems with stuff fitting. Yeah, I mean it's it's really really good so far. Right, so that's step twenty seven done. I put the chassis to one side, and we're now looking at um, the axles, the suspension leaves leaf packs and um, all that good stuff so let's have a little look here um, 
front leaf spring. Let's see what we've got here. I don't think it's that one. I think it's this one and this one. I'm gonna fluff off. Look at these lovely things, aren't these quite something? Pre-made, pre-set. That's how they come out of the packing. Um, they look like plastic leaves. It's hard to tell, but it, they, they look like plastic. They don't feel like metal. They feel like they might be plastic leaves, which is probably good. Probably good for tension and so on. There is a fair... It's not It's not a big deal to, to get the flex. Um, so there will be some play. I'm just not sure there's going to be a huge amount of it. Anyhow, so that and the front axle. Let's have a little look at that. Um, yeah, so it's all pre-made. Um, we looked at this in the unboxing, but uh, let's have another look at it again. I'm going to pop the diff cover off just to make sure that there's plenty of grease in there. But you can't hear it turning. I mean, it's beautiful. Feels feels amazing. Similar metal in the finish to the MC8 axles, which have stood up to an awful lot of abuse. Uh, yeah. They look like CBDs in there. Thing is atrocious. Anyhow, there you go. I always have a whinge. There you go. I have a whinge of everything, really. And of course, it's got the beautiful hubs on, already preset and loaded and ready to go. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get this um, cover off and we'll have a little look inside. Might as well do that with you while you are here. Not sure what that middle bolt is all about. Well, that all will be revealed in just a moment. Okay, you ready? Sorry, I keep banging the table. I haven't got any kind of... Anyway, uh, here we go. It's got some red gingery grease in there. Seems to be more than ample. I may just spread some of that around a little. Since we've got a lot of it hanging around. Let me get that out of there. Yeah, this is kind of... I wonder whether that... It just comes through the back. Can you pick that up? There you go. So you can just see the, the bolts sticking through. Um, I don't really know what that's for. Aside from maybe shoving a bit of grease in. Maybe, yeah. Um, maybe it literally is an oiling, a greasing port. So I could stick the nozzle in and just pipe a bunch of grease in without having to take the diff cover off. That would, it doesn't seem to touch anything or, you know, so maybe it's, maybe that's what it's for. Eh? Which could be pretty cool, to be honest. So I'm just going to show you this. There's a little bit of play on the back. So what I'm going to do, so I've taken the back um, clip off and replaced the uh, steel shielded bearing with a rubber sealed bearing of the same size, which I have plenty of. They're a standard, um, they seem a standard size. These are, these are bearings I've had for cross trucks for the, the S610 II. Um, you're going to ask me what size are they and I'm going to say I don't know because my thing doesn't have any sizes on it so i've put that in and what i'm then going to do is take some of my shims of various thicknesses i've got some 0.1 some 0.25s and some out of a bag that doesn't have uh, well i haven't got the bag anymore so i don't know what size <laughs> i hope you didn't think this is a professional well thought out pre-organized you know video because it isn't it never will be um so essentially, I'm just going to basically shim this at this end. Um, as long as I can still get the C-clip back on, as long as I can still get that on, then we could just be stopping, could just be in luck stopping the, the um, play. 0.135 of shims, and I now don't have any. So there's a fraction, but I'm I'm not going to have it jammed up tight. Um, but there's much there's you know the bearing isn't moving. I can't really see any visible. I can feel a little bit of play, but that's probably within the bearing itself, maybe. Um, 
no problem with the with the rotation all still moves beautifully you know so cool so maybe the other ones are going to be the same we'll see okay so step 29 is to take apart the leaf pack slightly you have to take the mounting brackets out off the leaf packs and sandwich the axle onto them uh, which is uh, pretty straightforward just don't go looking for them in the in, in, in the parts trays you will not find them they're on the actual leaf packs as they come you then attach the leaf packs and axle combination to the chassis through the fixed mounting points at the front and then to the rear you've got the uh, rattly bits as i call them uh, to allow the leaf packs to extend slightly i guess uh, but yeah no great dramas uh, it goes on quite easy um, it's quite a big step but it's a piece of cake to do Okay, so as if by comparison, this is the middle axle. Um, I noticed, I have shimmed it, but I noticed there was a little bit of a tight spot in it. So I've opened it up to have a little look. Um, and just by comparison, you remember the front axle was all lovely red grease. Uh, this has got very little grease in it. It has got something in it, some, a little bit of yellow, but it's quite dry almost waxy um, without the cover on there's no tight spot so I'm wondering whether this hard pack of grease here let me bring the camera around so I'm wondering whether this um, can you see it coming off on my fingernail just wonder whether that ridge, because it doesn't go all the way around, was rubbing against the front, the, the, the interior housing there. It's curious. Okay, so this is the rear axle, of the third axle. Um, I've just, I haven't shimmed it because it wasn't, there's no play in it. I've just put the rubber seal bearing in. Um, and it feels an awful lot better. There's no tight spot. And look at the grease in there. Yeah, I wonder what the middle score is that middle axle or the hard grease. I mean, it, to me, it just screamed old axle, whereas these maybe are new ones. I wonder whether, for example, that is a carryover from the previous version. Apparently, there's a previous version of this, or maybe even the CA10, um, where they've used older stock uh, as part of this kit. Seems odd, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, as I said, as I repeat, there's no binding, there's no sound of obvious mechanical mayhem going on. So maybe it'll run right. But yeah, this one, this one is much better, much much better. To the links on thirty-three, thirty-four. The the links are quite different. You may have seen in the unboxing, they are one piece, pre-done, no attaching uh, the heads or the the either the metal ball ends and stuff none of that they're all pre-done covered in plastic uh, they don't look very scale so they'll get painted of course but they are a joy to work with right well it's um three o'clock on um, easter monday and still and um time is going really quickly <laughs> i don't feel even though i've got the chassis together and the front axle on the chassis. Look at that. I talk about pimp in it. Look at all that metal work. Beautiful thing. Shame it's going to get painted and made to look muddy. Um, I'm going to do the back leaves now. And just another point I think I mentioned earlier in it with the chassis uh, profile tapering. It tells talks about here on step 36 about identifying the left and right um, leaf packs. The only real discernible giveaway is the slight in, uh, gradient on this piece here, this hinge. Where are you? There you are. This hinge piece here. So that's that's how you can tell left and right. And the rear axles is fairly straightforward. It's a little bit of a fingers and thumbs job. To help you, I would recommend that KDL006, which is a, a sort of curly metal piece that sits between the two leaf packs, you leave that out altogether until you've got to step 43 so you've got to you put the leaf packs and the axles on the chassis 
and then put the metal piece in and put the clamps back on the leaf packs otherwise you'll have trouble getting all the bolts between into the into the leaf packs and the chassis okay here it is so starting at the front da, da. and there's a little bit of there's a little bit of leaf travel it's not too stiff not too scary i'm not sure how much weight i'm going to have i said i think in the unboxing i'm going to try and add more weight to the front of this truck because i do want to get some leaf articulation and i think scale wise the um the rig isn't as heavy as it should be. The chassis is heavy, the axles are heavy, the gearbox is heavy, but I want I want a bit of more weight where the engine block would be. Um, moving along, we've got the, the the beautiful plate metal plate steps with their lovely texture. Um, we've got the plastic hangers for the fuel tanks, which are plastic, and the rear suspension setup, which wiggles not only independently but also together. It's hard to do on one hand, but yes. Uh, and then all the way to the back. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, it's me again, voiceover man. And thank you for watching part two. I was hoping to get the whole thing wrapped up in this part, but I failed miserably. Um, so part three will be talking about the electrics, the motor, which you can see all working beautifully in said video that you're just watching now this is a sneak peek this will be on instagram very shortly um so this the chassis is finished it runs it uh, articulates reasonably well and yeah very happy no great dramas to report and the, the whole kind of final assembly of the chassis was was you know really really good the middle axle doesn't appear to be causing any trouble either so yeah really good stuff thanks for watching and stay tuned for part three